Ms. Patrick Tay, Mr. Chong Hak Lai, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to join the event and share my views on Web3 and beyond. How do we define a revolutionary technology? Looking back at the history of technology, we will find that all revolutionary technologies, such as the maritime technology, telecommunications, or the internet, all have one thing in common. They have greatly boosted their globalization. These technologies help to expand our horizons, disseminate knowledge and information, and connect people in different regions to collaborate with each other, including encouraging them to travel around the world. Promoting globalization is the key to test whether technology can bring sustained and a far-reaching impact. So today, the topic of my speech is globalization and Web3 adoption. How do we understand globalization? In 2000, the IMF defines four basic aspects of globalization. First is trade and transactions. The second is capital and investment movement. And the third is migration and the movement of people. And the last is the dissemination of knowledge. We must acknowledge that the development of human society and economy has greatly benefited from globalization. And uh, the root cause so many crises in the world today lies in the crisis of globalization. The crisis of inflation, financial distress, or even bankrupt of many countries all lie in the challenge of deglobalization. And what's the biggest challenge of globalization? For globalization, there are four biggest challenges. First, the geopolitical conflicts have kidnapped global economic cooperation, leading to a situation where a trade barrier are re-established and various force powering globalization cannot flow freely. Second, the current status of a global infrastructure system basically equals to a sum of local infrastructure network, including information and financial infrastructure, connected by a number of fragile agreements. And these agreements can easily be broken or compromised. Third, in many regions, people are still using old form of currency and payments. Mature economic, econ, uh, uh, electronic payment system have not been established. Moreover, strict capital control policy discourages foreign investment. It's hard to imagine that more than 1.7 billion adult people in the world don't have access to bank accounts and financial service which makes it difficult for them to participate in globalization. Finally, individuals are still very dependent on a few large companies' access to information and sharing of knowledge. These large companies control the flow of information through algorithm and censorship, based on their own interests, not those of their users. It's difficult for people to explore opportunities globally if they don't have access to information and knowledge. How can Web3 adoption contribute to globalization? And what's the most uh, promising direction? The global Web3 adoption will have the chance to solve the, these problems. And apropos uh, globalization, the large-scale adoption of Web3 helps, the, helps to promote digital currency powered by distributed ledger technology, including fiat digital currency, stablecoin, and decentralized cryptocurrencies. With the widest spread adoption of digital currency, a widely distributed and a universally accepted settlement system will be possible. And this will greatly facilitate investment and business achieve on a global scale. With the development of Web3, a global open financial market will take shape. More and more people will be able to access basic financial services, even through, even though uh, they are not a preferred customers of traditional financial institutions. More and more decentralized protocols will replace current information international agreements uh, in the future. 
they are likely to become part of a new global order. Although divergence will still exist, on-chain governance will help improve transparency, and more importantly, divergence will result in hard forks rather than fierce confrontation. The massive adoption of Web3 will help deploy more and more applications on decentralized protocols, including data storage, privacy protection, and data computing. These decentralized applications will help users achieve ownership on digital assets, such as NFT and other forms of digital assets. In addition, decentralized browsers and data storage can maximize the sharing of knowledge and access to information on a global level. Another important application of Web3 is uh, digital identities. The establishment of digital identity helps people to build digital credit and uh, protected provides privacy in digitally uh, collaborative system. So how we can facilitate Web3 adoption and bring it to next level? We must acknowledge that the foundation of Web3 lies on a widely distributed network of decentralized infrastructure with a reliable performance. This is unavoidable. Otherwise, many applications will be like Santa Casa. So a lot of development will need to be focused on Web3 infrastructure in the future. There are a lot of exploration to be done for on-chain governance. We need to understand how to make use of blockchain transparency to improve the credibility of governance, how to motivate users to actively participate in voting, and how to minimize the pain when there are divergences, while allowing different ideas to coexist through hard fork. Web3 entrepreneurs should start working on providing real solutions that deliver real impact in real scenarios. Some of these solutions are innovation in the underlying technology and some are integrated innovations. It requires more Web3 entrepreneurs to understand the real needs and to collaborate. Finally, the involvement of institutions and regulators will enable the development of Web3 to be more compatible and attract significant user migration in a short period. All of this will be very beneficial to the promotion of Web3. Thank you for listening and I welcome you all to join the Web3 journey.